I get a lot of comments, a lot of questions from other creators or would-be creators on this channel. Whether it's someone who's maybe looking to make YouTube videos like I'm doing, maybe they want to write blog posts, or maybe they've got an even grander vision for what they want to do. If that's you, this video is going to be perfect for you because coming up with new things to say, making that video, making that blog post is really tough. So I thought I'd break down my process for creating these exploration type videos that I've been recently doing on the YouTube channel and just show you the, the true power of creating your own personal development AI and how you can use that to literally outline articles, kind of flesh out ideas for videos in a quarter of the time that it might normally take you to get this thing done. So the first and probably the hardest part of coming up with the video, coming up with the blog post is really finding a topic. And there are really three different ways that I do this and three different ways that I built into my process to do this. And the first one is questions from the audience. So I take those questions in the form of comments. I read all of the comments. I even get emails from people who have purchased my courses or people who are members of the channel. And I also have a form that people can fill out down below in the description to ask me questions. And what I do with those questions is those are jumping off points for me inside of these exploration article type videos. It's a really easy way to get started and you're guaranteed at least one person is interested in actually hearing your answer to this question. The way that I generally think about it, if one person is asking me, there's probably a couple hundred or maybe even a thousand people who are wondering about the same thing, but they're just not the type of person to ask. The next piece, is sometimes I'll pull topics from books, maybe articles that I've been reading that maybe I want to research a little bit further. So for example, I was reading through some Joseph Campbell stuff. I was looking a little bit about the things that Tom Rath has taught us about. And I made this video on what to do if you feel lost. A lot of people have asked me the question, I'm feeling a little bit lost. I'm not sure where to go with my life. What might I do? And some of the things that I was reading from Joseph Campbell and Tom Rath really kicked off that article. The third and final piece is just sharing what I'm learning right now. One of the best ways for me to learn is actually to share. And I start trying to create videos before I even know the answer to things. And that's kind of the secret sauce for me. If I have enough knowledge to potentially teach it, or I'm reasonably sure that I can learn enough to teach it, that's a perfect middle ground for me. So those are the three ways that I might find video or article ideas. The next piece is identifying some key points. So what's your piece going to be about? You want to identify the key points. I've got a couple of examples here for the video I did on five learning tools to cut your study time in half. It's mostly about things like focus, productivity, and, and things about purpose. So if we look into this, you can see that I've got things coming from Richard Koch, Chris, ba Chris Bailey, Cal Newport, all people that are probably inside of one of these content maps that I've created. Now I'm gonna do a video all about how you might organize your content maps, but suffice it to say, I've got all of the different books and ideas kind of categorized into these different topics. So for example, if I was gonna talk about something related to, to focus, let's say for example, I've got all of these different articles, all of these different ideas and books that I can reference about that particular point. So instead of starting completely from scratch, I might go and grab a couple of ideas from Isaiah Hankel or Pierce Steele and grab their procrastination ideas to build my article around if it's something about procrastination, for example. So that's kind of the power of having a note taking system where you can go in and you can actually have specific topics that you already have ideas outlined around. And for example, if I take this into actually the edit um, style of it, while you're actually outlining the article, if you're using Obsidian, you do two square brackets, and then you can say something like focus, and you can find the content map there, you can find the book, you can find different ideas, you can see Richard Koch is right there as well. So that as you're going, you don't even have to go and break your flow to go and find the idea that you want to go and think about. Or if you wanna kind of start from the top level, you could even start with the content map and go and find a couple of ideas and really build your articles around that. 
Same thing happens for the five things I learned about habits from 100 plus books. It's really about habits and goals. So those are the two topic maps or content maps that I would go and visit and I would build my article around some of the ideas that are inside of those content maps. It makes it a lot easier than having to come up with brand new ideas on your own or sorting through your notes to try and find the exact right article that you might reference. With these key points, you now are going to go into your research phase. If you've got your notes set up in the same way that I do, the same way that I would recommend, then you can start with those content maps and get going from there. When I'm writing an article, generally I like to reference a few different supporting arguments. And you can see this inside of the five habits that I learned. I've got things coming from BJ Fogg, things coming from James Clear, things coming from Dan Hardy, and really one idea from each one of those. I've got maybe six or seven different ideas in each one of these articles, and they're all coming from people who are experts on a particular topic, so I know they're already vetted. Deciding or depending on what an article might look like, it could be something like action-oriented points. Like, for example, if we come back here, we look at the uh, B equals MAP. We've got the behavior happens when motivation and ability and prompt converge at the same moment. So that's something more action item. Now, the plateau of latent potential might be something a little bit more theoretical. And then stupid small, again, making your habits incredibly easy is a really good action-oriented way to go about making your habits happen. Then you might think, okay, there's other things like for Ryan Holiday, the obstacle is the way. He's more of a storytelling type of an author. And I like to try and find a little piece of each one of those. So you could go something more action oriented, something more theoretical, and then even stories. And I like to intersperse those throughout my articles as well. And I'm making sure that I'm pulling out those different types of quotes from the books or articles that I'm reading. They're all gonna be inside other books and other articles. And then stitching these ideas together, that's what gives me a framework to work from. So instead of starting completely from scratch about an article or something like that, I've got research that I've already done in the, like in the past so that I can reference off of that. Incredibly helpful. One of the fastest ways to outline an article is to have research pre-done. Okay, now we've got our supporting arguments. We're going to go through... And we've got to make it our own, right? We can't just take these ideas and put them kind of sequentially. That's not really what we're looking to do. Instead, we want to add in our own stories or the stories of other people around you. For me, it's the story of the coaching clients that I work with or stories of me from my past business experiences. And what that does is it allows me to make it my own. Some of the example explorations that I've done re rather recently are what to do if you feel lost. And I talk about some of the questions coming from my different coaching clients. And that's how I kick off the article. That was a really great question to kick things off. And I knew I wanted to talk about Joseph Campbell. I knew I wanted to talk about Tom Rath. I knew I wanted to talk about Martin Seligman because those are really the three people that I think about purpose, kind of vision for a life and feeling like you're on the right path. Those are the three articles or three authors, I should say, that I think of when I think of that. And then what I did is I went through and I found different ideas from each one of them and I put them into a sequential path. Finding your sacred place, asking what you can contribute, finding your calling, being the hero of your own story and then being your own best friend. You can follow these in a sequential order. They're not necessarily that way in any one of these books and no one book actually contains all of these different points. So it's something completely unique to me, something completely unique to the way that I think about these things. So that's why it can kind of differentiate itself. And people who are watching these videos are going to get something that they wouldn't be able to get without reading a book. I also talk about different things like, for example, my coaching practice, where essentially the sacred place or this concept of quiet time is one of the most important things that I help people with in the first couple of weeks. We also have additional activities that I've gotten people to do. Like for example, what can I contribute? I ask my coaching clients to write down a full page of what they think is wrong with the world. And that's something that's not in any of these books. It's something I came up with on my own that I can share with the audience to start, make this, start making this my own. So you begin by finding your topic, you identify your key points and you consult your topic maps or your content maps about that particular thing. You pull out a few supporting arguments from top level authors that you know are going to be impactful to your readers. 
then you make it your own, both by setting it up with your own stories, setting it up with your own practices, and then even the way you organize your article can be your very own as well. The way that you do this and the way that you outline your article in this way means that you're using only the highest quality of arguments, the top 10% from the authors that you can trust and can be trusted. It means that when you're reading a book and you're taking your notes, they're not going to be useless. You know that you might come back to them at another point in time, which makes your reading feel like it's productive rather than just kind of a procrastination. But also by using your own stories, your own anecdotes, and your own personal style, that helps get the point across to your particular audience. People who connect with me might not necessarily connect with Joseph Campbell, Martin Seligman, or Tom Rath on their own. But if they can connect with me, then I can use the articles and those kind of key points from those authors in a way that might help my audience out. So that's the way that I outline an article inside of Obsidian. If you're interested in getting direct access to my full Obsidian, my personal development AI that has over 600 different ideas and 100 different book topics that you can use for your very own articles, you can click the first link down below in the description or the big blue join button and join the channel to get direct access in any device that has access to an internet browser. Thanks so much for watching this video and I can't wait to see you in the next one.